This is the PlayStation 5 Pro. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. This is the PlayStation 5 Pro. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that's probably gonna happen a lot. How's the lighting? All right, literally just got back from GameStop. It is November 7th and three things came out today. The PlayStation 5 Pro, Mario and Luigi Brothership. My mic is not in the right place. And the third thing was Starbucks' Christmas menu. I know, I know. Why is my PlayStation, it's like already open. Why was my PlayStation already open, GameStop? It also, it sounds very loose in there. That's what she said. Ooh. I'm not the smartest guy. I kind of forgot I'd be getting a new, nice new controller. I also got the disc drive. I, re I remembered yesterday that this thing doesn't come with a disc drive. Yeah, about that. I'm just doing the math looking at my GameStop receipt. I spent $800.28 at GameStop on this thing and then also had to spend another $95.38, which means all up, it cost me $895.66 to buy the PlayStation Pro. I already had a PlayStation 5. <laughs> You know, I mean, I don't know what I expected, but there it is. I remember being so impressed by Xbox's reveal of the console when you open up the box. I mean, this is just, I mean, it's just shipping. This is just, it's safe. It's safe in there. Is it smaller? Oh, it's smaller. Oh, I'm shocked by how small it is. That's- Wow. I- I think it's just because of how light it is, but then I haven't added the disk drive yet. The only thing to really comment on here, I suppose, is these, these speed lines. These nice new lines on the side. Yeah, I guess it looks nice. Oh, this is a whole, this is a whole operation. I don't feel equipped for this. I, I hate that it didn't come with a disk drive. It's called PlayStation 5 Pro. Pro, the big one that can do everything and better, but it can't play discs. How is that a pro? Oh my God. Oh, okay. I don't think I really even need instructions. <laughs> Famous last words. I know I heard it when I said it. And then snap that in. There we go. Honestly, hey, took two seconds. Hi. 80 bucks, Hello. about six bucks. Hello. <laughs> what a Down world here. we live in, huh? Down here. Yeah, it's me, Tiny Wood. <laughs> I want to tell you about today's sponsor. You can make me a little bigger, just a little bit, so that it'd be good for the s No? Okay. I'll just be little. You see all of this over here, everything going on here? All this is made possible by Surfshark VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's giving you a private network, because I don't know if you know this, but nothing you do online is private. People can see everything you're doing. Yes, even that. <gasps> A VPN creates a encrypted tunnel around all of your data so nobody can see what you're doing. On top of that, it can protect you from having your information stolen or shared around, protect your credit card details when you're shopping online or on public Wi-Fi, even at home. I might be a tiny guy, but protecting my data is a big thing. Guys, make me a little bit bigger. Thank you. Once you have Surfshark VPN, there's a ton of fun stuff you can do with it too, like unblocking content. If you go to Netflix and then change your VPN region to anywhere else in the world, you can literally unlock that country's Netflix. There's nothing small about Surfshark's offerings. You can use it on unlimited devices with just one account. Thousands of servers in over a hundred countries. One of my favorite features is the built-in antivirus. Best part is if you thought you were getting a mini wood offer, guess again, you're getting a massive oak tree 
very slong sized offer. What did I just say? Because by going to surfsharkvpn.com forward slash beat em up, you'll not only get an extra four months, but at an unbeatable price. Price that is for a limited holiday seasonal time. Okay, but okay, bye, bye. Um, this is Mini Woods saying bye. You can keep watching the video now. It's been a couple days, and I've spent a lot of time with I'm the so PlayStation cool. 5 Pro. There were five select games I wanted to try on it. Those games were Stellar Blade, Jedi Survivor, God of War, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Spider-Man 2. The reason because there were 50 games at launch that were optimized for the Pro, and these five games are in that 50. And I also happen to have all five of those games. Before I show you any of those though, one thing off the rip I absolutely adore about the PlayStation 5 Pro is its massive two terabytes of internal storage. In fact, it was a struggle for me to fit all five of the games I'm reviewing today on the base PlayStation 5 at the same time. As we all know, internal storage does end up costing a lot of money, so you can factor that into the price tag a little, I suppose. And you can save a little bit of that money on the stand because if you buy the disk drive, I don't think you really need it. It's pretty secure without it. So, I mean, I guess that's nice. The first game I knew I wanted to play on the Pro was Stellar Blade. And not for any creepy, now I have it in high fidelity reasons, but because the patch for this game added 120 frame support. On top of that, this is just a game that I really like and I've been taking my sweet time to finish, so I'm still actively playing through. Hilariously, every game I played treated the quality and fidelity and resolution and the frame rate settings completely differently. Stellar Blade leaves in all three original modes. The performance, quality, and balanced modes from the base PlayStation 5 are still here. They just added two extra modes and they called these modes Pro and Pro Max. And please pay attention because every game that I played in this video called their pro settings something different. So the original PlayStation 5 modes for Stellar Blade, as I said, performance and quality, there was a balance mode that merged the two. And it was the best mode out of all three options on the base PlayStation 5. Looked great, played great. However, with the pro, the first mode is pro. <laughs> just called Pro. It's an enhanced balance mode that uses the PSSR for superior quality. PSSR is PlayStation's new AI upscaler that's only available in the Pro. It's called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution with advanced ray tracing and optimized console performance that reaches higher and more consistent frame rates with support for 60 hertz and 120 hertz displays on selected games. All of these PlayStation Pro optimized games makes full use of this new PSSR. Essentially, artificially increasing the resolution and the visuals of these games. The reason that's great is because that artificial enhancement doesn't draw as much power, it's not as taxing. So now we're actually able to do 60 frames and 4K, essentially. And in Stellar Blade's case, 120 frames. Then the Pro Max mode. This prioritizes resolution and provides higher frame rates. So essentially taking the old quality mode, but just making it 60 FPS without using the PSSR. So an interesting two options here that honestly, I don't see much of a difference between them. I can tell the Pro mode is hitting higher frame rates on my 120 hertz TV that's behind me. So ultimately that's the mode here that I prefer. The place that the PlayStation 5 Pro excels in is taking all of the old quality modes and just fixing the frame rate, which, oh my God, that's exactly what I wanted. That's how it should have been to begin with. I find it so funny that on the original PlayStation 5 box, they had an 8K symbol. 8K. After a couple years of not fulfilling the promise of any 8K games, they actually removed it from the box. So what do you think they put on the new PlayStation 5 Pro box? Oh, that's right. Nothing. It doesn't say 8K again. <laughs> it just says the same 4K 120 HDR. So like, what are we getting here? 
What were they smoking the first time that they promised 8K that a huge boost in hardware still can't do 8K? It does say disc free console up here with a big slash through the disc symbol, which makes it seem like a plus, right? Like, don't worry guys, it's disc free. I had to spend an extra $80 to put my own disc in it. This is like if you went to the store to get sugar free candy, but had to buy your own sugar and then melt it all down, mix it back in and recook it. Don't act like this is a good thing. This next game, was honestly, and I kid you not, going to be my make or break game for the PlayStation 5 Pro. Whether or not I was pleased by the optimized performance of this game was going to heavily sway my opinion on it. The reason being, this console generation has honestly been a disappointment for me personally. Having to constantly pick between a performance mode, low resolution graphics, or quality mode that quite frankly is always unplayable, honestly giving me a headache. And Jedi Survivor was easily the biggest disappointment in that way. I played through the whole game on PlayStation 5 in performance mode and I really enjoyed the game, but the quality mode was disgusting and the performance mode at launch before they patched it wasn't much better. So I would really have hoped the PlayStation 5 Pro optimizing the game would have saved it. And I gotta tell you, thankfully, it really, really did. I'm actually really impressed by this one. Perfect example of why the PlayStation Pro does maybe need to exist. So loading this game up on PlayStation 5 Pro, you still only have two options. It's the same two options as before, actually. Quality and performance on both versions of this game. So the quality mode is the highest resolution with ray tracing at 30 frames and performance is lower resolution with partial ray tracing and 60 frames. Here's where I don't want you to get tripped up because hearing that you're thinking, are you kidding? We still have two options, a quality mode with low frames and a performance mode with high frames but low quality. What are we doing? Why is it the same? Well, you might have noticed I've already kind of said this with Stellar Blade, but it's the case with Star Wars 2. Pretty much all of these optimized PlayStation Pro games have taken the old quality mode and given it the better performance. And now that has become the new performance mode. It's just they're also pushing even further now and giving us an even better quality option, which is again, tanking the frame rates even more. And I'm okay with that, to be honest. It's a little silly because you can still load up a quality mode on a PlayStation 5 Pro and, and have 30 frames on it still, but the performance mode is the old quality mode with great performance. That's fantastic. And that's absolutely the case with Star Wars. I don't, I really don't know how anyone played this game on the old quality mode. Look at that, it is so chunky and horrible next to the new quality mode with a very smooth 30 FPS. Yeah, hi, me again. I'm just editing this and I wanna point out a couple things. One, I'm sorry if any of the footage looks a little washed out. The HDR settings on the PlayStation Pro were a nightmare to work with. Next, the difference in quality between these games were so clear when I was playing on my big 120 Hertz TV, but editing this footage, even I can barely tell which one was different. The frame rates are pretty obvious, but the fidelity is just completely lost once you put it into a smaller screen and it's not an OLED and it's watching it on your phone. I swear it looks better in real life. <laughs> You're gonna feel like I'm lying to you, but it does look better, I think. So let's talk about the flagship ray tracing phenomenon that is Spider-Man 2. So ray tracing is a big deal to a lot of people now. It does help make games look very realistic and it really comes down to a lot of reflections, like water reflections and mirror and glass reflections, stuff like that. They are things that help make a world feel more real because it's a little uncanny when you have these things like mirrors in a video game that you can't look into. I remember being very impressed when I was a kid whenever I played a video game on like PlayStation 2 or 360 and you could actually see your reflection in a mirror. It just didn't happen much and it's because it's taxing on a console to display the same thing back at you. So a game like Spider-Man where you're swinging around New York City and every building is made of glass it's been a little hard to do those reflections in a way that's nice, but with the use of ray tracing and a more powerful system, you can really make all of these buildings, windows and the giant glass buildings, reflect in a really cool way. I 
booted it up on the Pro first, and I was very blown away by how it looks, and we can talk about that. But then I went to record footage on the old PlayStation 5, because of, for all of these games, I did comparisons footage and recorded raw footage of the PlayStation 5, and I was shocked when the game loaded up and I started playing and I went into the settings to change it to fidelity mode to find out it was already on fidelity mode. The new pro looks so much better that when I went to play on the old one, I thought it was in performance. Quality mode on the old PlayStation for Spider-Man legitimately looks worse than the performance mode on PlayStation 5 Pro, which is what you would hope, hope for, but I was shocked at the difference for this one. So the new modes here are Performance Pro. It's a smooth 60 FPS, which is keeping the image quality and standard fidelity mode using PlayStation's PSSR. All ray tracing is on, including reflections and water and window interiors. It's the recommended mode to play. So let me break that down again. And this is what I've been trying to say. It is the fidelity mode of the PlayStation 5. But now with a smooth 60 FPS, and you've also got the ray tracing and the reflections and all of that. Then you also have the fidelity pro mode, which again, reaches even further into quality but strips it back to 30 FPS again. The biggest differences here are just in those reflections. Oh, and the draw distances. The draw distances are uh, much better now. Like you go to the top of the Empire State Building and you do a 360. I realized the eject button for the disk drive is now on the disk drive, which is cool. Also makes sense because, you know, if it's a diskless system, you wouldn't put an eject button on the system that doesn't have a disk. That would probably confuse people. I love that though, because on this old one, I don't know why, but I could never remember which one was eject and which one was power on or off. But I would always hit the wrong one and end up turning off my console when I wanted to eject the disk or ejecting a disk when I wanted to turn off the console. So God of War is, um, a tricky one. God of War when you load it up on the Pro, it's kept the original quality and performance modes in here, and it's added a PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced mode. You only have one option, and it's the quality mode from before at the higher 60 FPS frame rate. There's no other option. Um, that You can pick between PSSR anti-aliasing, or the old temporal scaling option. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> lost the word. The difference here is a lot more negligible, I think. It doesn't feel as big because they haven't really done much. They've just taken the quality mode and made it 60 FPS and that's it, that's your only choice. And that's great. And that's exactly, again, like I said, what I wanted from the PlayStation years ago. I wish this is how it was. It's just putting those side-by-sides together. To be honest, the old performance mode for God of War looked pretty fantastic. There's not really too much else to say here. This is actually the most underwhelming one, while at the same time doing exactly what I would want it to do. But believe me when I tell you, I saved the absolute best for last. It actually kind of pisses me off how good this next one is. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth looks phenomenal. If every game looked how Final Fantasy looks on the Pro, I would have absolutely no hesitation saying the upgrade is worth it. Cause holy cow, what did they do here? I'm actually annoyed. Played the game for 93 hours. I'm done. I'm out. I did everything I wanted to do. I beat the Queen's Blood storyline, everything. So Final Fantasy VII, it keeps all the original three modes in the pro version. You can access them all. The new pro option, just because we can't keep with any kind of naming scheme here, is versatility. What does that mean? I can't tell you because unlike all the other games, Final Fantasy VII doesn't even give you a blurb of what every mode does. Just call it perfect mode, because it's perfect. They perfected it. It's great. It's perfect. This new versatility mode, it isn't the old quality mode in 60 FPS because it looks better than the old quality mode. And it's 60 FPS. <laughs> the side-by-sides absolutely speak for themselves. There was no way to see this game like this on the PlayStation until now. And to also have the frame rates, it is quite shocking. I, I'm quite blown away by this one. Again, I wish I wish all of the games I looked at today 
had as big of a leap and improvement as this one. It's a shame that these games do have to be optimized. It's very clear if you go into like Stellar Blade and put it on the old quality mode and see the 30 FPS chunk. Yeah, you can't just buy the PlayStation Pro, stick in an old game that hasn't been optimized and hope for an outcome like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's just not gonna happen. The games literally, they have to be optimized. Maybe you'd get better load times, maybe there's a slight performance boost, but for the most part, it looks like no. These games have to be optimized. You have to get those pro settings to see a big difference. So I don't know how many games they're gonna go back through and support. I'm assuming a lot of them. Overall, my experience with playing these optimized game on PlayStation 5 Pro, it's pretty hilarious to me that we still have options to pick from when it comes to performance and quality. <laughs> if you just look at it like that. But as I've explained, the new performance modes are the old quality modes with the performance which is incredible and what I wanted. Look, in a lot of these cases, the performance and the quality upgrades are pretty clear to see when you're playing them on a nice 120 Hertz TV. But when you're trying to look at them through YouTube compression, it just doesn't hit the same. It's really about the feeling you get when you play these games in the higher resolution and mostly with those higher frame rates. What I'm trying to say is the experience of playing a PlayStation 5 Pro does feel different. It's just, I I still retain it should have been what we got four or five years ago with the base model and it sucks that we have to pay so much to upgrade and get another version just to get what I feel we should have had so close to what I feel like is going to be the PlayStation 6 which is gonna be an actual upgrade and improvement this is a lot of money do I think it's worth its price yes hardware is expensive technically dollar for dollar it is worth the price. But is it worth it to you? No. I would imagine most people watching this probably don't think it's worth it, and that is completely valid. Probably not. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm excited to actually get to play a game on this now. I've just been running around in little areas and in old games I've already played recording footage for like two days. I'm sick of it. I want to actually sit down and play something. Can I play something? Is that all right with you? <laughs> okay, subscribe. Goodbye.